My name is Kenny Hunter. I have been a practicing sculptor for over 35 years. In that time, I have produced and installed around 30 public artworks in the UK, abroad and abroad, including four in London, three in Glasgow and three in Edinburgh as well. Uh, two in Germany, two in France, and beyond this I've had numerous solo exhibitions and it, of my work, both here in Scotland and the UK and abroad. I have my artwork collected by the Tate Gallery in London, uh, the Scottish National Gallery of Modern Art here in Edinburgh, <coughs> and in Edinburgh University and Aberdeen Art Gallery, to name a few. I also lecture at Edinburgh College of Art in Sculpture. Over the course of my career, I have developed to realise public sculptures in collaboration with healthcare workers, firefighters, coal miners, diverse local communities from Shetland to Castle Milk and from Cali to the Gorbals. I am and have always been a childhood fan of Scottish football and as a 12 year old I remember watching the undefeated Scottish football team play in the 1974 World Cup led by the captain, Billy Bremner. So that's a quick, short version of who I am and what kind of practice I have, what kind of work I make. I'd like to talk a wee bit about my website. Uh, I'm going to show you here. Um, this is my uh, website, which hopefully you can take a little look at yourself um, over the course of uh, this process of choosing an artist. Obviously, this section here, public works, is probably of most interest to you. You can see the diversity of work. This work I would draw your attention to here, Your Next Breath. This is a public artwork I did for a COVID memorial for um, Surgeons Hall in Edinburgh, installed in 2022, and it has just recently won a UK award for the best public artwork uh, in 2022. Um, and uh, nationally in the UK. Um, it's a group of four diverse uh, figures who are um, finishing a shift on a COVID ward and taking their masks off and their PPE is coming off and their humanity is coming back into play again. And we're showing qualities like resilience, compassion, exhaustion and reflection. Um, so let's look back at some other works of mine. Um, you can see how to take a look. You can have a see this one is in London, the Southwark Memorial. This is around a hospital in Harrington. Blackbird Persistence of Vision. This one here is um, in Leicester Square in London. It goes wraps around the entire building. Uh, sort of freeze, if you like. Um, Uh, this is in Glasgow, the Glasgow Elephant for Glasgow is cast in iron. Uh, this is a thing I did, a uh, public art I did in, uh, near Cali in France. It's a sort of portrait of the area with different icons from that area. Um, so I'm very involved in research before I begin any public artwork. It's a really great part of, of what I develop. I, t I think about the context, I think about the audience, I think about the history. It's very much a sort of um, considered part before I get into actually making an ob a sculpture. It's very much about understanding the person or the subject of the work and the place it's going into. And I really begin every public art project as a listening exercise on my part. I know I've got a lot to learn. There's not I can bring something to the discussion, but I'm obviously, in the first instance, really keen to learn and to listen. Now, this is a piece I did in the very far north of Scotland, in Borgie Forest, cast down skeleton. And it, this work refers a lot to local myths and the local um, uh, geology and uh, stories about um, giants that, that, that still are part of that the Highland oral tradition. Uh, I think we should probably move on now. Uh, please take, take time. Uh, here's, again, maybe the last one I'll show you, Citizen Firefighter. Um, 
possibly one of my more well-known works in terms of where it's located. It's in outside Central Station in Glasgow. Um, I think it's quite a nice wee work to finish on because I think it, it captures quite a lot of the essence of what I'm about, which is, on the one hand, it's a traditional sculpture. It's built in clay, cast into bronze. It's on a stone base, so very traditional in that sense. But in this instance, there's no identity to the figure. It's up to the viewer to imagine who's in that suit, who's in that protective suit. It's also lower down than a traditional statue. It allows the public to touch it and become, interact with it. It's not elevated uh, to a point where it becomes heroic. It's at a very human scale. So I'm trying to produce empathy for the figure rather than reverence. Okay, so I'll maybe talk a wee bit about um, Billy himself and what or how I might approach uh, the opportunity to um, work with this man's life and history. Um, <clears throat> So my vision for or, or for our approach to making a statue of Billy Bremner would be I would propose to depict him as a 15-year-old at the point of leaving the Rapaloch. His whole outstanding professional football career ahead of him. He would be wearing the Scotland schoolboys kit, who he played for four times in 1958. This would be a sculpture about potential, human potential and strength of character. He would be depicted still and reflective with a ball in recognition of his leadership qualities and role as a playmaker. Statues of footballers in action can be dynamic. Uh, uh, so here's another image of Billy just before kickoff and this is a kind of moment I'd be trying to get in the sculpture, the kind of moment before uh, the action kicks off. So yeah, here we are, the kickoff. So either, either holding the ball or standing on the ball or just about to pass the ball, like this in this photo. With, uh, so the whole drama of the football match is about to unfold, but it's a moment of thought as well, it's a moment of uh, mental um, alertness. Um, I think, yeah, let's talk about football statues in general and ones that are moving, flares and movement. This is a very competent sculpture, obviously. It's beautifully modelled, but I always find these sort of figures in action to be a little bit stilted and at odds with the nature of sculpture. I think footballers in action is the realm of photography, and photography is best suited to capture a fleeting moment. But I think statues are much better off... Um, capturing the still moment. Now I'll explain that why. Here's another example of the football emotion. I always feel them a little bit. All the energy is flying out of the arm or, or out the foot. There's no circularity, there's no stillness, there's no sense of an inner life in the statue. They're kind of, in a way, to me, they're kind of dead looking, even though they're moving, but there's movement in it. It depicts movement, yet there's a kind of death to it. Now this, for me, is a statue which speaks about an inner life, about a character. Um, this is a fantastic sculpture of Bobby Moore outside Wembley. It's a still uh, image, as you can see. It, it mimics something that is real, that is naturally still, which is that, that moment of thought before things start to get serious on the football pitch. That maybe doesn't look like the start of a kickoff. I'll, I'll agree, that's more of a kind of still pose. Here's one of Peter Osgood outside the Chelsea football ground and one of George Cohen outside Fulham. So these are the kind that I would say this is a kind of territory that I'm interested in as a sculptor to work with. And why I choose them, those sorts of um, moments is because I believe you can really communicate the inner character that allowed Billy Bremer to become an exceptional car uh, captain and footballer. You can, you can communicate intelligence, you can communicate tenacity, resilience and commitment to the team. So yeah, that's my that's my approach to it all. The fifteen year old Bremner in his nineteen late fifties, early sixties sort of kit, tenacious, resilient. Uh, his whole drama of his life, his professional career is ahead of him. 
in a way it's a kind of opposite to the one that exists at Ellen Road, which is him celebrating his achievements, if you like. Okay, so that's me done. Hopefully um, everything I've said is fairly clear. If it's not, please don't hesitate to get in touch and let me know uh, what you have still to get from me. Thanks very much. Bye now.